Hey folks, JP here. It is Friday. I'm in Metairie near Kenner, Louisiana. And uh, yesterday I removed a hive out of this garage wall. It's kind of close to the fence and everything. Uh, today I, I think we have a little more room to film hive number two. Okay, so got a good bit of bees out of hive number one. All right, here's hive number one. Here they are going in. The shed's in pretty bad shape. Bunch of termite damage, some rot, things like that. Likely due to intense heat, these comb sections fell to the bottom of this wall void, which removes proper bee space, thus allowing small hive beetles to start laying their eggs and producing larvae. Ordinarily, you have a space between the comb sections, but when they fall and they're laying on top of each other like that, it allows the beetles to get in between the comb sections, but not the bees. And then the beetles are able to still lay in their eggs and to produce larvae. That can become a real problem for a beehive. Judging by the color of the comb sections and the density of the combs, the amount of buildup mm -hmm. of cocoons in the cells. You know, this isn't a new colony. You know, they've been in this shed for probably quite a while now. Why don't you give us a new home, JP? This shed sucks. Ah, they're getting bossy now, folks. All right, here's our queen. Beautiful Italian-looking specimen with that golden caramel-looking abdomen. You know, we're doing these bees a favor by relocating them. You can see the wall void, termite damage, and so forth. You've got a full catch box full of bees, so let's go ahead and set them up. All right, this is the following day. Okay, removal number one. Let's go ahead and take, we'll take the catch box off, okay? Now, there are a few bees up top. But for the most part, they've dropped down. All right, we're going to gently just take this and set it aside for a minute. All right, Let's see, we still had some bees up there. Let's just put these aside for now. I'll show you what we're going to do in a minute with that. But right now, we just want to go ahead and get the cover on. Okay, we give them a little puff and run them down. I gave them a, a feed frame yesterday. Because we, uh, we didn't really use a lot of that foam, it was kind of messed up. Old, had termite part and nest attached to it. Alright, so we just want to go ahead and get this, get this on. Hey, careful JP! That was a close one, you almost one of us. Alright, oh, they moved. <laughs> now, one last thing we'll do. The bees that are left in the catch box. Alright, and you can just shake them right on top, it doesn't matter, because the queen's caged. So, go ahead and And also you can give the, the box a bump. And then you just set this aside. And you're good to go. Uh, today, I think we have a little more room to film hive number two. Let me show you where uh, hive number two is going into the exterior wall. So we can kind of do what we need to in the exterior here. But, uh, and I can't recall if they're going in here or here. But it doesn't really matter. We're going to go ahead and take the multi-tool and cut a section out. One uh, yesterday had some bracing about four feet up going across, and I did take a thermal reading inside and it looks like that they, they they do have bracing somewhere across here now the other one was was actually in two stud sections because uh the romex wiring that went through the studs allowed them to go into the next section they'd been there a while folks probably years anyway let's get to it all right this looks like a mature colony as well this old comb how dark it is some of it fallen that bottom right section i don't know if you're seeing that or not because there's plants in the way let me see if i can move it can we see that see how it's kind of screwed up there you know well, let's open this up see if they built any comb in here all right let's see if i can open this up one hand Just using the iphone right now folks to film with so bear with me <laughs> Get it there. Alright. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. So we got here folks. There's some some plywood or something behind here unless I don't know how far up it goes. Alright. No comb right there, but 
Let's explore it a little bit more. They might just be in that void space. I haven't used any smoke yet on these gals, but um, the other one I did have to use a little bit in the beginning stages because, you know, they probably hadn't been messed with in years. Just like these, I didn't find any signs that the other one had swarmed. I did find some holes in some comb, which is usually an indication that they were probably queen cells. They'll leave like that void right in the middle of a comb section. You know, I didn't see any signs that they were about to swarm, those swarm cells. But this one could have. These could have swarmed, you know. Now the other one, they were able to, to start building more comb over to the right of the section that they started up in. So these right here may not be able to get over, hence they'll be more congested and more prone to having to swarm to alleviate numbers. All right, here's the very top of the hive. Comb almost looks like it's got a pinkish color to it, huh? And uh, you see we got the soundboard. The termites have kind of done a number on this. But we'll probably just be able to peel that back. It should come off fairly easy. Ho hopefully, it uh, a lot of the comb's not attached to the soundboard. It looks like some is. Oh well, so we'll just kind of have to pick at it a little bit. It looks like our hive's probably just going to be in this section. I'll open that next one just to be on the safe side. But I think that's probably going to be all just in that one step section. All right, we got both adjacent areas opened. Nothing going on in there. You can see the, the blocking right here. See, it runs all the way across. So this will be a hive, folks. Let's go ahead and pick at this thing and see what we can uh, figure out. Give y'all a good home. Y'all deserve it. Yes, we do. Get us out of here, JP. All right. something we can frame up at least maybe one one for, uh, comb section would be nice folks is developing male honeybees, these large pronounced cells, that's drone brood. Hey, watch it. These flatter cells, those are developing worker brood. Some nasty messes with 
this is, folks. Nasty mess. So it's got like a pinkish tint to it. I'm wondering if maybe this was a, a dead out. And the, these bees swarmed in. It even been a swarm cast from the other collar. But uh, that's what it almost kind of looks like. Because this is some ugly stuff here, folks. Ugly. Your mama. <laughs> I have seen bees, you know. Go right into a dead out plenty of times. You know, a dead out that had small high beetle larvae, even wax moth. Slimy, nasty looking thing. Bees swarm moves right in, they start cleaning house immediately. Yep. They don't care, they go for what's familiar, okay? And when, a, when scout bees from a swarm are looking for a place to uh, colonize, and bees have been in it, whether it be a man made dwelling or tree or something like that. If they can get in there, they're getting in there. So they got to do a little more work. That's what they do. They work. You know, busy as a bee. That's why they only live about six weeks. You know, the workers live about six weeks because they're working all the time. They don't mind a little repair here and there, or even a lot of repair. They, I mean, they don't even think twice about it, folks. They just move in. If you had bees move into some equipment of yours that had been sitting around and had wax moth webbing in it and all that stuff, the, bee, the swarm will just move right in and slowly but surely you'll see them pushing out debris and they're cleaning house and they're getting things in order. You know, they don't care about all that, what was in there before. What they care about is they can smell that a hive's been there. It, they are attra highly attracted to that. So, you know, so what if it's got, if it looks bad to us, it doesn't look bad to them. <laughs> Line up all up in that food. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Maybe it was a swarm that moved into a dead out. That's kind of what I'm thinking of. All right. Let me check these cells, see if there's any eggs. And I'm seeing some cat roots, so I'm assuming that probably are eggs. I gotta put my glasses on for that, folks. <laughs> what happens when you get older? A few eggs. See the little tiny, looks like little grains of rice. See? So funky. I really want to use. Let's see if I can try to. It's as ugly as it is. Let's see if I can bring this up. Maybe I'll just put some bits and pieces. You, you know, you want something to lure the bees into your setup. Okay. <laughs> I may wind up using this. I don't know. It's ugly as it is. Just give me a little more. I could probably figure something out on this. I said a queen could be on this too. She could be on here.
did it be, you see? Shake them in the, this cover. That way if she's underneath some of these bees, I could see and maybe spot her. sense out of this. Wow. It is funky, no doubt. This just might be the ticket to get these bees to orient to our nuke, folks. Okay? Always check the back side, make sure you never squinched anybody, you know? This might work. Get this in now. Show y'all something kind of pretty. Check that out. Isn't that pretty? It is. That's not. <laughs> See where she's hiding, folks. Is it that color? I don't know. It's like a light, light brown or a pinkish brown. Shaking bees into a new box. And it uh, shouldn't be too much longer, I'd imagine, that looks on, I think.
really running down now. Hit him with a little more smoke. See if I can't run him down. Oh, they are really running. Let me show you this craziness. See how they're reacting? They're really running down. I had a video. Uh, I don't know if it was bees in the trash. I had a couple of them where the bees weren't responding to smoke, okay? Well, these are... And this is, this is, believe it or not, more typical. Okay, I mean, these are actually pretty sensitive to smoke, but usually they will respond to smoke if you want to run them off comb sections. You know, you puff them, eventually you can get them moving. But uh, sometimes they will get very stubborn. I guess it's that particular colony. You know, and they just won't let up off the comb sections. But these, obviously, you smoke them a little bit and they're running. <laughs> All right. So let me see if I can grab that last piece up there and see if we can't spot Queenie. I'm trying to pry the back side of this comb out without smushing the bead, so. That's why you see me kind of finessing it like this. All right, that's a good piece. Might have been a micro sting just then. Micro sting is just when the very tip of the stinger gets you, but uh, the bee for some reason non committed. <laughs> yeah, that, that serrated uh, bar didn't get in you. So. Alright. Let me get a better grip on this because I'm about to drop it. Well, oh, there's a lot of bees on the back side though. God bless. See that? Let's see if I can get a better grip so I can shake this. I think it's pretty self-explanatory what I'm doing when I shake the bees in the cover. I'm looking for the queen, folks, okay? That's what I'm doing. So we're down to one little piece left. Uh, <laughs> let's see if I can uh, get up from this precarious position. Run these down so I can grab that last piece of comb and get that out of there.
We should be singing that queen in a minute now, folks. Y'all do realize that, right? Pizza comb up. I see her. Oh, she's a half one too. As my friend Bud would say, she's a half a beautiful queen. Let's get her on film real quick. beauty. Alright, let's put her in the setup now. Real beauty. Pretty much a wrap, folks. We're gonna let them uh, you know, get situated, orient to the nuke, and uh, but we got all the comb out of the wall, and uh, everything you know, is looking good, and um, maybe a little more bees than I thought. But hope y'all enjoyed the video. Maybe learned something. Another one from JP the Bee Man. I'm having a fantastic day, and I hope you are too. Until the next one, y'all take care.
folks, just want to give you a little update on the Bee Man versus Brickwall Full of Bees video. I had quite a few people asking me, well, who does the repairs on the brick wall? And that would be my brick mason friend, Mr. Willie. Willie and I have done several jobs together over the years, and I think he just does a fantastic job. As you can see, once I removed the hive out of the brick wall, he came in and did his magic, and I think he just did a bang-up job. So here's a little update. I just wanted to show you the final result. Hope y'all having a great night. Until the next one, bye-bye now.